The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in 1974, is a film that has left a strong mark on the horror genre. Directed by Tobe Hooper, this movie takes you on a terrifying journey with a group of friends who encounter a family of cannibals in rural Texas. The film is known for its raw portrayal of horror and has become a classic influencing many movies that followed. As we dive into the details, you'll find out some funny, shocking, and sad facts about the making of this film. From the intense heat during filming to the real-life inspirations for the story, there's a lot to uncover. Now, let's talk about the actors. While there are no classic Hollywood actors in this movie, the performances are still memorable. The cast was relatively unknown at the time, which adds to the film's authentic feel. We're curious to know, what's your most memorable moment related to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Maybe it's the first time you watched it, or a particular scene that stayed with you. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. In the heat of a Texas summer, five friends on a road trip fall prey to a family with a gruesome secret. The 1974 film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre shocked viewers with its raw portrayal of horror. Directed by Tobe Hooper, this movie became a landmark in the horror genre for its realistic style and terrifying villain Leatherface. Set in the backdrop of the 1970s, a time of social and political change, the film reflects the era's tension and disillusionment. Its influence extends beyond its time, shaping horror films for decades and leaving a lasting mark on cinema. The film's low budget and unknown cast helped create an atmosphere of authenticity that made the terror on screen feel all too real for those who watched it. In an unconventional form of compensation, John Larroquette received a marijuana joint for his voiceover work. On set, Gunnar Hansen was instructed to portray Leatherface in a state of frenzy, resulting in an impromptu chainsaw dance that became a memorable part of the film's climax, despite an earlier version being excluded. Daniel Pearl and Tobe Hooper, facing opposition from producers, insisted on including a now-celebrated shot in the film. Despite threats of dismissal, they stood their ground, ensuring the shot's inclusion, which contributed to the film's lasting visual legacy. In a moment of frustration during holiday shopping, director Tobe Hooper envisioned the concept for a horror film as he navigated through a busy store, his eyes landing on chainsaws. This idea took a macabre turn when the set was adorned with animal remains sourced from a veterinarian, which were later disposed of by incineration behind the house. The film's intense atmosphere even affected the cast, with actor Gunnar Hansen channeling his own exhaustion into an unscripted, yet iconic scene where he swings his chainsaw in anger, a raw display that was captured on film and made it into the final cut. In the making of this horror classic, the dedication of the cast was evident, particularly in the scene where Sally, portrayed by Marilyn Burns, jumps through a window. While a stunt double performed the actual leap, Burns sustained real injuries during the filming of her character's fall. This film's significance is recognized in Steven Schneider's compilation 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, marking its place in cinematic history. Furthermore, the antagonist Leatherface became a cultural icon, inspiring numerous professional wrestlers to adopt the persona in various promotions around the world, with the character even being reimagined as Super Leather in Japan's Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. These elements together highlight the film's lasting influence beyond the silver screen. Marilyn Burns, a talented artist, dedicated her career to the performing arts, focusing on plays for young audiences and contributing to the theater scene in Houston. Her passion for the stage was evident through her multifaceted roles both behind the scenes and in the spotlight. In a stark contrast to her theater work, Terry McMinn's portrayal in the film required her to endure physical challenges, notably managing to hang on a Mifuk for a brief but intense minute during filming. The character Leatherface, portrayed by Gunnar Hansen, is defined by his choice of masks, each reflecting a different facet of his twisted personality. The masks killing old lady and pretty woman serve as a chilling metaphor for his lack of true identity, with the choice of mask dictating his behavior and role within his deranged family. This disturbing detail emphasizes the character's unsettling presence and the absence of humanity beneath the surface. Despite its chilling presentation, the film is a work of fiction, crafted before the supposed real events it portrays. Ed Ginn's dedication to his role was so intense that it nearly led to an accident on set, reflecting the high tension during production. The actors Terry McMinn and Gunnar Hansen 
were compensated modestly for their performances, with McMinn receiving 700 and Hansen slightly more, highlighting the budget constraints typical of such films. In the process of revisiting and reshaping a horror narrative, Gunnar Hansen was involved in casting and rewriting the last horror picture show as of November 2005. Despite his significant role in providing narration for three films and a well-known horror series, John Larroquette did not share the enthusiasm for the genre, admitting to never watching the films he narrated. On set, the intensity of the production was reflected in the physical state of Marilyn Burns' costume, which, after days of filming with fake blood, had hardened to the point of rigidity. In the making of this horror classic, authenticity was inadvertently achieved during a harrowing chase scene. Marilyn Burns, portraying the sole survivor, navigated the underbrush in terror, sustaining real injuries. Consequently, the blood scene on her was not entirely fabricated. Meanwhile, Tobe Hooper sought a specific gravitas for the film's opening narration, reminiscent of Orson Welles' distinctive timbre. Despite John Larroquette's efforts to emulate Welles, Hooper observed that the result unmistakably bore Larroquette's signature sound. The character Leatherface, infamous for his macabre mask, drew inspiration from Ed Jane. However, Jane's criminal history diverged from typical. This film holds a significant spot in cult cinema, securing the sixth position in a major publication's list of all-time favorite cult films. The casting of its antagonist was a point of contention. Gunnar Hansen initially declined the role due to the film's intense violence, but was convinced to participate by his friend and co-star Marilyn Burns. The production faced challenging conditions, particularly during a pivotal dinner scene. The cast and crew endured the stench of decomposing food, which was exacerbated by the sweltering Texas heat. Hansen, under the mask of Leatherface, suffered greatly as he was unable to remove his mask except for breaks longer than 15 minutes, which never occurred. In the creation of this horror classic, director Tobe Hooper envisioned a complex family dynamic among the antagonists. Jim Cito's character, often thought to be the father figure, delivers a line that has sparked much debate about the true relationship between the characters. The ambiguity of their kinship adds to the unsettling nature of the film. Gunnar Hansen, who portrayed Leatherface, faced the unique challenge of conveying meaning without words, interpreting lines of gibberish into non-verbal expressions of the character's thoughts and emotions. A particular scene demanded a retake when Hansen's portrayal was deemed too articulate, as Hooper wanted to maintain the character's raw, unrefined presence. John Dugan's experience under the old age makeup was a grueling ordeal, enduring a 36-hour continuous shoot in extreme heat, compounded by the discomfort of heavy attire and the presence of decomposing props. The intense conditions led to an atmosphere so oppressive that it affected the crew physically and mentally, with Edwin Neal comparing the experience unfavorably to his time in Vietnam. This dedication to authenticity contributed to the film's powerful impact and lasting legacy in horror cinema.